two, three. Ah, you okay? No. Now, for this bench, I wanted to use some of this white oak I have sitting around. I have about 400 board feet of it, and it is really great for this bench. It's kind of crunky, and uh, so a lot of the knots won't be seen in this. I'm using most of this for the dresser project I'm working on, but I figured that this would be a uh, great use for it. So after choosing all the lumber, I went through and marked out how long they need to be. Most of these boards will get ripped right down the middle all the way down, um, and uh, then cut to about 40 inches long as that will be the length of the bench. Now one of these days, I really need to build a saw bench. And until then, um, yeah, I'll end up doing this for anything that's longer than about 40 inches. But, uh, you know, it works. But, uh, yeah, I need to build one. <laughs> for anything that's uh, about 48 inches or shorter, I can do it vertically on the bench and uh, clamp it in the vise. And this actually works very, very well. Um, I, I like cutting like that. Then I can cut them all to length and make sure I remove any of the uh, the crunky pieces that I have, uh, any of this uh, junk stuff that doesn't last. Some of this has a little bit of a live edge that'll be sticking out on the bottom. Um, I don't have a problem with that. I just need to clean off anything that's kind of pithy or uh, no longer stable. Now all of these planks will get glued together, so I just need to make sure that they are parallel. I'm not squaring much of anything up other than making sure that two of the main sides are parallel. So I'll go through and joint them all um, nice and flat and no twist. Some of that means a little bit more work, and some of them actually go fairly easily. But uh, yeah, it was a lot of this. <laughs> After uh, jointing them all up and getting nice flat parallel sides, I can glue them all together. Uh, finally broke down and got a roller for glue and it works a lot better. I love using these clamps. They're just uh, a lot of fun. But uh, while that's all gluing up, I can start working on the legs. And uh, these are about two and a half inches by three inches. And I cut them all about two inches longer than I needed because I'm going to be trimming them up later. After uh, that, these ones I do need to actually square up all four sides. And so I'd plane one side nice and flat, and uh, then measure off of it and uh, plane up the other sides. I actually did a video recently on squaring up stock, and so if you want to take a look at that, you can. But basically, after getting one side really nice and smooth, I can use a marking gauge and mark the thickness I want for uh, the other sides and uh, plane down to that thickness marking. Some of these that mark was actually um, a bit more than I would normally want to plane, which uh, basically if it's about a quarter inch or more I need to take off, um, I, it's quicker just to pull out a saw and cut it down than it is to plane it. So I get to use my favorite saw again, and I love this thing. It's a lot of fun to use. But after that I have to uh, clean off the plane marks a fairly quick and simple process and make sure it goes down to that uh, that marking gauge line I just put on it. So now that I have four legs all to shape and size, I need to start laying them out on the bench. So I can actually mark out where they need to go on the bench and then lay out uh, where they need to go. There's going to be basically a large shouldered tenon uh, that will go through this and be flush with the front. And so I need to mark out where the shoulder is on it and uh, cut that out. Um, I like to use a chisel just to give myself a little bit of a knife wall for the, uh, the saw to ride in. Get a little bit cleaner cut and uh, easier to work with. I could use a tenon saw here, but for this large of a stock, I really liked using the uh, larger panel saw. And then I can cut down the cheek. Uh, <laughs> pretty one, one big cheek here, but uh, a lot of fun. Now after cutting that down, I need to uh, cut the dovetail to go on the bottom. And so I need to know how deep that dovetail it's actually going to go through the top is. Um, I lay that out uh, by making a mark for the thin side of the dovetail. The broad side of the dovetail is actually the far corners, so I don't need to mark on that. The corner itself is the mark. And then I can start cutting it. This is actually a lot easier than it looks. I uh, just have to make sure you follow your line and uh, cut right down it. This is, this is actually really, really fun for me. I like this point. 
But then I can cut the, the shoulder and remove that small wedge from the uh, dovetail. Then once the dovetails are on there, I can lay it out on the bench and make my marks exactly where it will need to go. And I transfer those marks from the bottom all the way up to the top so that I have the, the exact same location on the top and the bottom. And uh, this, is, this is the boring part. <laughs> but uh, I uh, use a, a, a brace and bit to hog out three holes in each of these uh, dovetail uh, slots and I'll do it from the top and the bottom and make them meet in the middle. Then I can come in with a chisel and staying a long ways away from that line, um, I start knocking out most of the mass around those. And uh, I, I try and stay at least uh, you know, a sixteenth of an inch to an eighth inch away. Once I get most of it out, then I can come back in and trim everything up to that line, keeping the chisel nice and square to the outside edge, uh, working all the way down from one side to the other. And usually I only go a little ways. I don't go all the way through so that I don't blast out the other side. Then we can start doing the test fit, putting the legs in place and uh, seeing how they go. Most of them slide in nicely, but uh, this last one needs a little bit more coaxing. Uh, in the end, I'm really happy with how they all uh, they came out and nice fit. Uh, dovetail sticking through on the top. So here's where I'm at so far. Um, this is uh, this is kind of the bench that I would want, um, but uh, I don't have the space to uh, to build that bench right now. So I'm building a bench for my kids. Um, and then I heard uh, the Dusty Life podcast is doing a bench build off, and I thought. I can't put it off any longer. I got to build a bench now. So, this is where I'm at so far. Um, all of the top is made of white oak. Um, it was from a, a tree just about an hour north of here. Uh, there's a bunch of trees, um, and it's all air dried. It's been air dried for like 15 years, um, and it's it's really fun to work with. But it has a lot of figure and a lot of knots. It's a a, a a solidly B-grade wood, um, but that just makes it more fun to play with. Uh, the legs, the two front ones are also white oak, and uh, the two back ones, um, I actually, I didn't have enough uh, thick stock of the white oak, uh, so the two back ones are made out of uh, um, box elder, uh, which is kind of like a soft maple, um, and I'm really enjoying playing with it. Um, it's my first time to, to play with that. Uh, Matt Cremona gave me uh, a couple pieces of other things to play with, and so I'm I'm looking forward to uh, to playing with those in the future. Um, I had a couple people ask me why am I leaving the uh, the bottom jagged like this, um, and when I finally get the end, I'm gonna be nipping off this, uh, so you you still see this jagged, but you don't see uh, this thing sticking out here. Uh, but I I kind of like the rough rugged look of it. Um, and it just wasn't worth my time to then rip down all of these boards again. It would probably be another two hours worth of work. And uh, there was absolutely no need for that, so I'm leaving it there. When I put the stringers in to support the bottom here, I'm actually going to be cutting out a notch all the way along it um, so that it sits up flush against uh, the bottom of these. But uh, that will only take me you know, 10, 15 minutes to, to knock out. So this is something that is a little bit more doable. Um, I wanted to leave the front skirts large. Um, I kind of like the idea of the English bench, uh, but I'm not, uh, I'm not a huge fan of the English bench having these skirts and a thinner top. I love having the Rubo big heavy top. I like having the legs flush with the front. Um, it makes it easier for putting clamps on here. Um, and I just I, I enjoy that that style, um, but I do like the extra stability of the skirt um, This is also going to allow me to put uh, pins all the way through and so I think that will be a uh, an interesting benefit So yeah, I'm kind of liking where this is going and I think I have about another week Well, I better have another week because I have to have this done before WIA so a Video will be coming out uh, next Saturday as well, and uh, hopefully have the finished on this so if uh, you have any questions on what I'm doing, please leave them in the comments below. I'd love to hear them. If you like the video, please hit like and think about subscribing. Also, a huge thank you to the patrons on Patreon. You guys are really one of the huge reasons why um, I can keep doing this, and I can still put out three videos a week. So, uh, thank you for that. Uh, if uh, you want to hear more about that, you can click on the link um, right down here. Uh, that's about it for this week. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, if you did, feel free to check out one of my other videos. You might find something you like there. And until next time, 
Have a wonderful day. Two, three. Tip, 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 tip. Mm, onto the arm. Oh, fingers.